Hello guys, my name is Sarah and today I am honored to have the opportunity to speak to you about what I think is the most dangerous risk in an enemy. In my opinion, I think this was nuclear really war. The reason I picked it is because it's the most likely to happen, unlike a meteorite crash, which will take a few years and many more to come. Next, it's fatal to those with students. As tens of thousands of people could get dead in the very first minutes and seconds. So, what is nuclear war? Well, nuclear war is when a nuclear bomb is dropped on a specific country or city that the other country might target. This, these weapons can cause large explosions that can destroy entire cities and countries. So, when were these nuclear weapons first used? Well, it were, they were first used in the year 1945 when the United States dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in order to make Japan surrender for the end of World War II. Well, what happens to a city if a nuclear bomb is first dropped on it? Well, first, the explosion would happen in the center of the city where the country, other country would have dropped it. This would kill tens of thousands in the first blast as most of this explosion could incinerate people from miles away. Next, after this, the mushroom cloud will appear above the city, raining ra radiation and other debris down on the city, which will in turn cause many more deaths from poisoning and contact with the radiation that was dropped from the sky. This is when most of the people will realize what's up, but most of them will die because most of the aid will not arrive in time, as the debris will block out most land-based vehicles and water-based vehicles, and in the sky, the black smog and radiation will block any planes and helicopters from coming through. So, what will happen next? Well, after this, there, the country will realize that its city has been nuked. In turn, this, they will retaliate against the other country and, and nuke the other country in the hopes of getting revenge. This will cause a war that the world will have to pick sides on and no country will be safe. So, what will happen after this? Well, after the war ends, there will be, some, there will be an event called a nuclear winter. The, nu the size of the nuclear winter depends on how large the nuclear war was. The more radiation, the more deadly the nuclear winter will be. In fact, most of the people who survived the nuclear war will die in this event, as the, as the radiation will block out the sun and the and everything will be contaminated by radiation, so nothing will be edible, mostly. So what would happen, how do we stop this? Well, some good ways are diplomacy, public awareness, which means that we teach people how to get prepared for these kinds of events, and early warning systems, which would warn the country before it's too late. So I hope you had a great time listening to my speech. I thank you all for taking the time and taking the time to listen to my speech. Thank you for listening to my speech, and I appreciate the time you took for me. Thank you. I think you wanted to go first all the time. <laughs> I think more like, uh, let's, uh, it's easier in certain people's mind to go first, right? So uh, now, when, I, when we get into, when we start a new batch, I always see when they go through the sp uh, speeches multiple times, not just this speech, multiple speeches as they go through the classes, they get they sort of fall into some categories. So Saran is like uh, I would put put him as a uh, very energetic speaker. There's always energy in his speech, and a person who once he is aware of the topic and he has done his work doesn't need a lot of preparation, doesn't need a lot of practice, he can come in and he can naturally speak, right? So he's uh, uh, engaging with an audience is something that he comes naturally with him. So uh, great job, Saran, well done. And next.